Hey everybody, Charlie here, and thanks for assembling on us. As promised in episode 11, we're going to take a closer look at our trash or tactical recon and salvage shroud suit. Um, I've got it suspended from the ceiling here so that we can see a little bit better. It is attached to our rucksack that we would have our emergency supplies in or things that we would need to sustain ourselves for a day or two while we're out in the field. This is not a evacuation operation. This is salvage, reconnaissance, food gathering. We've established our home base and we're venturing out to get the lay of the land or um, maybe we have evidence that someone is moving around in our area. We want to check those people out and see what they're up to. We're salvaging, we might need to find different pieces of equipment, um, things that we can adapt and uh, you know, use in our survival situation. So the suit is uh, simply a camouflage mechanism that will allow us to move around the urban environment um, without being detected. Again, based on a traditional ghillie suit design, we've just used the burlap and then I've attached it to one large garbage bag cut lengthwise on the inside to help with some color considerations and then I thought this would be handy um, you know for inclement weather or cold environments that could uh, provide some body warmth back onto you and it actually works amazingly well when I shot episode 11 it was hot out with all that equipment on long sleeve shirts things like that um, that you would need to protect yourself when you're out searching through rubble, gloves, you saw the, uh, the filter that I was wearing, contaminants, asbestos, God knows what's going to be floating around in the air, an entire city, um, you know, is possibly in ruins around you, a lot of contaminants, so we want to try to filter that out as best as possible. I've gotten several comments about my eyewear, those are prescription sunglasses that I had made for me when I was working in Iraq inside the vehicles get contact flying broken glass hot brass uh, ricochet you know ricochets or slivers of what whatever flying around so we'll want some way to protect our eyes um, and then that's it the the bag is attached um, to the shroud with just a couple of cable ties but it's only through the garbage bag itself so if this gets snagged up while I'm running trying to flee danger or whatever it's not going to hold me in place the whole thing will just tear off of the uh, my rucksack which stays on me and then I can leave the shroud uh, where it lay so if you're interested in uh, I put together a little lesson plan on how I built it if you're interested in seeing what we did send me an email at charlie sellens at rally uh, dash point dash LLC dot com and uh, I'll provide you with a link where you can go in and take a look at those lesson plans so that's about it for the suit let's go over to the workbench and we'll take a look at some of the equipment considerations that you might want to think about if you're going out on some type of salvage or reconnaissance mission what we have here is a basic chest rig that you would normally use these compartments to carry spare magazines for your rifle in and these would be for what this one is actually being used for which is a spare magazine for a handgun um, but for our salvage operation and this one by the way is from US Palm it's a really really good piece of kit um, I've had it for a while now. I got to field test it a few times during training exercises and it's held up really well. These pouches will hold either AK-47 magazines or magazines for your AR-15 or M4 platforms. And you can adjust simply by tying a little knot here the tension that you need to hold those in so it works really well. It's a good piece of kit so far. I really like it. But for our salvage operation, what I've done is replace those magazines with tools that I'll need to have readily available to me so I can work and salvage, scavenge different things. So basically what I've got here is my Surefire flashlight and everything is always dummy corded down so that if it comes out of the pouch while you're running or 
crawling, climbing, whatever, you don't lose a valuable piece of kit. It stays, stays there with you. Um, so we've got that straight bladed knife, straight bladed knife here, again dummy corded down, and this gives us more dummy cord to use if we should need it for something. Magazine for our pistol. Here we have a small crowbar um, that's again latched down. What I've done is just taken a piece of cardboard and folded it over. This has a bit of a sharp edge, so I wanted to protect the tool, but I also really wanted to protect myself if I'm running or whatever, just trip and fall and gouge myself in the chest with this somehow. That would suck. So, um, and then here we have a pair of tin snips that we can use for cutting tin, different kinds of metal, cables, wire, whatever we need to cut things with. And next we have two pairs of vice grip pliers. Really handy for locking down onto things, unscrewing um, bolts, that sort of thing, wrenching on things, tearing pipe apart. And we've got two of those so we can get one in each hand and really exert some leverage. Seems kind of silly, but what we have here is basically commercial um, firework, military smoke. These actually will put out a surprising amount of smoke. And so the idea here being we have a couple of those with us and we run into contact. We're trying to break contact. We have a lighter Velcroed and dummy corded down and strapped right to the outside. These come right onto the pouch there. So it's right there. We light that. We can throw it, provide some smoke and mask our movements while we try to break contact and move away. On the outside here, this didn't come with the uh, attack rack, but it's a small um, first aid, well first aid major trauma. I've got things to stop blood loss, tourniquets, pressure dressings, bandages, that sort of thing in here and that's attached to the outside. And then it has this great interior pouch that works with a zipper and I just took a cheapy little carabiner, not a real one for climbing, but you know just holds up 20 pounds or whatever and I just put it on there for ease of grabbing a hold of that zipper rather than trying to be fumbling around for a little cord. Now I can get a hand on something and really pull that um, open and it gives me another area to to carry something light if I wanted to. And then I can store more things, food, water, ammunition, um, extra tools, things in here. And what I did was I wanted these tools up close to me. If I needed to carry, say, ammunition for a rifle, I could put that in a drop holster on my leg or take out some of these tools, configure it different ways. But you can use a good piece of kit like this for a lot of different reasons than the ones that it was originally intended for. So let's move this out of the way and we'll bring in some of the other equipment that you might want to have on your salvage. Just the basics of our protective equipment, in addition to um, pants, heavy duty, you know, denim pants, 5'11 kind of tactical pants, something that's going to take a pounding, and long sleeve shirts to protect us from broken glass, sharp splinters of wood, rabid animals, whatever. We want a long sleeve shirts. Uh, I talked about eye protection. I need to wear spectacles. These are prescription sunglass lenses that I had put into a kind of a racquetball sports frame with the strap to make sure they can't go anywhere. And like I said, I actually wore these for nearly a year in Iraq, specifically in the cars, in case we had to break contact from inside the vehicle. Spent hot brass, shattering glass, ricochets, whatever, just projectiles flying around inside the car. You want to be able to protect your eyes good pair of heavy duty gloves. These are special made tactical kind of gloves. Um, reinforced leather palms, uh, reinforced knuckles, knuckle guards to protect your knuckles. Something like this is really nice. Um, or you can, you know, go down to Lowe's and get yourself several pair of pretty good gloves there. 
Here we have just some elbow knee pad kind of things. I just put these on on my elbows to protect my elbows as I'm laying on the ground. Um, commercial sort of pick these up at a hardware store for your knees. I was using them on my shins to protect my shins from rebar. Broken concrete. Sort of military grade knee pads. Really durable, really padded. Straps work nice to kind of secure them in place. You might want to run a couple of pieces of tape extra around these. Your pants get sweaty, your legs, they do kind of chafe here in the back. Um, and but anyway when it gets wet they tend to want to kind of slide down so you want to I usually put up some tape something to kind of help snug these up and help hold them on to my bony knees some sort of a filter for breathing it doesn't have to be a military kind of grade gas mask this one is used for you know working with wood or drywall if you're going to be sanding drywall that kind of thing but what we're looking to do is use these filters to keep as much of the asbestos and god knows whatever else is floating around in the air in an urban environment after a big disaster you know destruction of buildings whatever and important to kind of watch what we're breathing in as much as we possibly can all right everybody I hope you learned something that's going to do it for another uh, exciting episode of A Symbol on Us. Keep training, stay smart, stay safe. Contact us if you'd like to get those um, the lesson plans for building your trash suit. And uh, stay safe, and we will see you next time on A Symbol on Us. I am out of here.